Sugar Ray is just sublime without the rap or drugs. Well, we might as well do a morning roundup. The uh, other part of the guitar snake, yeah, I got the tail made, good. Another alien shark coffee cup is coming along, looking very normal. Big old hammerhead got done. Big alien got done. Big shark got done. Whatever was there. Oh yeah, yeah, the cheese, already took it off. Cheese got done, that's going out. And of course, we have a large hammerhead over here as well. The secret to YouTube, say things weird and fast. See, I'm letting you in on the good stuff. Oh yeah, big project for today. Not a big project, but something that has to happen. We gotta get the first filament rig working again by replacing the bearing. Not really a hard thing to do, but uh, once we get the initial stuff packaged and sent out for today, that's gonna be on the list. I guess we gotta get the new printer set up and stuff. Hopefully that's not too hard. Time to get this little guy started. Nice, sturdy strands. I'm on the playlist. I am the A-list. I reveal. There we go. Pretty big frog dish, six inch. Time to drop this bad boy off. Yo VIP, let's kick it. Cooking MCs like a pound of bacon. Fluffy come home. I think it's thrift and coffee time. We got a bunch of stuff to do back at the shop, but there is time for my one or two of life's pleasures. Taking two trips has meant that I've almost lost two full days of production. Not of production really, but of packaging and stuff. Now we were pretty ahead of the game, which is why I felt comfortable doing it. But we gotta get some crap done. I just learned that the Spanish word for banker is banquero, which is way cooler, honestly. <laughs> if I was a banker, I would introduce myself as a banquero. We will name you Zatara. It means driftwood. Okay, this is a really random one, but I just started, I, I forget how I got started thinking about this, but I was thinking about low IQ people. And it's, I think it's a real shame that low IQ ever became like an insult. Like it really shouldn't be because that's making fun of somebody for being low IQ is like making fun of somebody for being short. That's how we should think about it. I mean, you know, there's a debate about whether you can kind of get smarter or not. You can get more educated and you can use more with your IQ, but it's kind of debatable whether you can actually get smarter as a baseline. But anyway, I was thinking about um, back in the day with my friend group, there was this girl who was, had a confirmed IQ of 70, I believe it was. She was really, she was really into me. <laughs> she wasn't bad looking either, but it just, it's like it didn't feel sort of right, you know, obviously. But she was a very nice person. You know, there was nothing, she wasn't, there was nothing like a mental handicap with her. She was just low IQ. Anyone that's ever slowed down that one scene in Forrest Gump, I believe Forrest Gump had an IQ of 75. So she was slightly below Forrest Gump. But it's like, there's nothing wrong with, just like, you know, if you have a receding hairline or you're short or whatever, like these are just not things that should be denigrated in any way. It's just, it needs to be fine. Basically, if we were doing our job as a society, we would destigmatize low IQ. And that's just a thought that occurs to me sometimes. And with that as a prologue, we are at the thrift store. Perhaps I am low IQ. That's kind of cool. Wow. Literally everybody had this growing up. 
Ooh la la. Check this out. The Steve Winwood album with Higher Love on it. It's a pretty solid album. Random Japanese flag. I, I have no reason to own this. Not a lot of gems today, but pretty good Steve Winwood. Yeah, Steve Winwood album. I believe he was in traffic. Um, the band, not the situation where there's a lot of cars around. And I really like the John Barley Corn Must Die album, which I think is kind of a cliche opinion when it comes to traffic. But uh, his solo stuff's good too, obviously in a really poppy 80s way. And this is probably like the album to own of his. If you guys have never taken a deep dive into electric folk, as in like the 60s, 70s sort of genre, it's pretty worth it. Steel Eye Span is good, Traffic is good, Fairport Convention is good. For me though, the absolute best electric folk band is um, Pentangle, if you could call them that. They're almost like an acoustic electric prog kind of thing. But Pentangle, I'm a very, very big fan of. I could listen to them all day. If you do want to listen to Pentangle, um, I would recommend the Basket of Light album. They have other stuff that's good, but you don't want to start off with the, with the hard stuff, okay? You want to start off with uh, the intro drugs, let's say, the Gateway album. Pentangle is sort of a cover band, but the songs they're covering are like 500 years old or something. On their Cruel Sister album, they do a song called Like Wake Dirge, which is in Old English. And, but some of the some of their songs are original. It's worth checking out. If you're at all inclined for that kind of stuff, you don't want to go through life never having listened to Pentangle, let me tell you. Now that I'm thinking about it, Like Wake Dirge may not be on Cruel Sister. But I've talked about this enough. Just don't roast me in the comments, okay? Decided to skip the coffee today. There's just too much stuff to do. Cause I got that printer to set up and it might need new parts and I didn't get to test it. Cause it was just in the driveway. <laughs> yeah, let's get back into it. There's too much stuff to do. Beef oven. Oh, got this one too, buddy. All right, man, thank but, you. How's it going? Just barely made it with that one. Isn't it weird how generic brands never have sponsorships or anything from famous people? Well, I would like to uh, lend my services. Shout out to Kroger brand grapefruit sugar-free soda. It's the real thing. Small dolphin. This is not a joke. Somebody bought something and their name is Lucifer. I don't know if getting a good review from Lucifer is like what you want. If they happen to leave a bad review, I'm gonna write under it, this person is literally Lucifer. I mean, the father of lies, right? Whatever they say, just believe the opposite. Okay, we are finally making the bottom of the fries. This has gone way too long. Little froggy boy. We're swapping out the bearing. We're gonna see just how bad this thing is. Here is the old one. There is the new one. You can see that the thing is pushed in. And obviously it looks pretty rough. I went on Amazon and I found a bearing that is the size of the original one that came with the extruder, which is very close to this. The original one is like that wide and the one I got is like that wide. So I suppose the width probably does matter a bit, but this will work until that one gets here, which is like a week. It's like almost kind of a special order thing. I guess not a lot of people use these. Last thing we gotta do before reconnecting, this drive shaft has to be pushed in because this is too close and it's gonna rub. And uh, I guess we'll use a clamp for that. Using this thing as a bit of leverage, the clamp doesn't quite 
go straight onto the thing, but it kind of works this way. There you go. Drive shaft is back in place. Only the green is sort of showing. All right, that took forever, but we're back. Well, we're back in the game. Both of these working. And uh, good. We need to get that filament saved up. Time to paint these eyes and get these guys to their homes. Gray ukulele hanger. Normally they get these in black or white, but we do sell a gray one every once in a while. Got a couple of Sharkos. Just gonna get the little stringies off here. Came out pretty good otherwise. Time for the big cheese. This is of course going yellow. Little alien boy. Stuffed pork chops. I believe it's stuffed with cornbread. This, we're doing the eyes. This guy's going green. There we go. 4.5 inch pug boy. This guy's actually supposed to be black. I don't think I gotta do anything to him. Oh, man. Oh, what a solid day. Didn't get around to setting up the new printer, but we did get the, at least the big important thing is we got the uh, initial original filament production setup working again, which is a really big deal, but we'll get to that new printer tomorrow. Ugh. It always feels so good to finally sit down in the seat of gratitude. I realized we never did the Monday thing of showing the new products. This is the chart. You can see that there is a slot for each day. I put a magnet beside the days that I introduced new product. This is for last week, and there are two of them, which is suboptimal, but not that bad considering how busy things were. But yeah, we've got three pegs full of the, um, the filament on the racks. You can see uh, there, I grabbed one of them, so it's technically just one roll short of three pegs. But we are looking better and better to make it to the Christmas deadline of having all the pegs filled with spare filament. It's looking really good. I guess I'm just grateful that everything is working out. All the machines are working, basically. Sales are good. Getting lots of clicks and lots of views, never a bad thing. Just one of those days where nothing really went wrong. Got some good reviews, it's a good day. Once we get the new printer set up, oh, I'm printing the bottom of the fries, which is just, it's only made a little progress, but that means in a couple days, we're gonna have the brand new fry product. Anybody that's been watching for a little while know this has been coming for a long time. It just needs to happen. And those are going to be some fire pictures, I'm sure. So those, those are things I'm grateful for. Write down in the comments what you're grateful for. Tell me about what products, projects you're working on. What small moments of enjoyment you've been having. What's going right in your life. What challenges you've got in your life. Just everything, everything you're grateful for. Just leave it in the comments. I'll read it. Probably get a heart. Probably get an upvote. Probably get upvotes from other people. Peace out.